have the money for their college by now. But, you know, God is there. He's there. He's, you know, he's shown me the more other stories. And you're still applying for those jobs, so pray for a job. Hopefully, now that I have everything, yeah, that'll happen. But. Okay. Thank you. Anybody else? I don't want to cut anybody off. Have you found God faithful, yes or no? Yes. Good. Let's, let's go ahead and look at the scripture together. 2 Corinthians chapter 9. And are y'all still okay if I preach? Anybody not okay? Y'all lock the door, okay? <laughs> we'll do that. I, I want to talk to you today about being generous and about seeking God in different ways. We live in a world that is so negative. This series is called Stay Positive. Well, how do you stay positive when the preacher just talked about money and he's going to talk about it the whole time? Well, you know what? I want to give you a challenge. I was going to give this at the end. I'm going to give it at the beginning. Are you with me? Yes? Okay, so here's the deal. If you're not giving today, maybe you've given in the past, but you're not giving today, or maybe you've never given, I want to give you a challenge. Three months, 90 days, okay? Take the scripture down if you would. For three months, 90 days, if you'll give whatever God puts on your heart, 10%, whatever it might be, if in 90 days you've not found God to be faithful, we'll give you every penny back that you've given to the church. Gaston, you good with that? Okay, Doug, Shannon, you all good? Jennifer, you good with that? Hey, Sean, it's about, we'll give it back to you. So ch- check it out, okay? Try. I mean, these people who just spoke to you, God's done something incredible in their lives. I want to challenge you. Some of you may need to take that. You need to tell me that you're taking that challenge. At the same point, God will do something incredible. I, I believe this is one of the most tough subjects, or the toughest subjects, because when you start talking about money, they say you start meddling, Right? You don't want to talk about politics. You don't want to talk. <clears throat> well, we're going to talk about money today. When you think about money, really what we're going to think about is what's closest to our heart. Because you see, you look at your checkbook, you look at your wallet, wherever you're spending your money, that's where your heart is. Honestly, where you're spending their most time, your most, most resources, that's where your heart is. And I want to show you today how those things are tied together. Let's look at the scripture. Let's stand together. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 6 through 11. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 6 through 11 says this. Remember this, a farmer who plants only a few seeds will get a very small crop. But the one who plants generously, say generously. The one who plants generously will get a generous crop. You must each decide in your heart how much you will give and do not give reluctantly or in response to pressure. For God loves a person who gives cheerfully. And God will graciously, excuse me, generously, and God will generously provide all you need. And you will always have everything you need and plenty left over to share with others. As the scripture says, you shall freely, excuse me, they share freely and give generously to the poor. And their good deeds will be remembered forever. For God is the one who provides seed to the farmer, then bread to eat. In the same way, he will provide and increase your resources and then produce a great harvest of generosity in you. Verse 11, and yes, you will be enriched in every way so that you can always be generous. And when we take our gifts, your gift to those who need them, they will thank God. Father, I pray in these next minutes that you would give us an understanding of what it is to be a generous church. Not just a generous church, but generous people. And thank you, Father, that you were generous to us. And I continue to be generous to us. As we have needs, you show up. As we need healing, as Cindy reminded us, you show up. And Father, I thank you that you're going to teach us some of those principles today, that you make us generous people. In Jesus' name we pray these things, thanking you for our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. You may be seated. One of the most revealing scriptures in in all the Bible, I just read to you those five or six verses. The promises that God has given us are seen here, as well as the principles of what it is to be a giver or to be a generous person. And God has laid that on many of our hearts, as you've heard today. So think about, what, what is the seed I just read to you about? Is that seed just money? No, that seed is everything, as Lee said, it's your time, it's your resources, it's the talents that God has put in you, and we're to be generous with those. When we give, when we get from God, we're we to give back. What about the blessings? Well, let me give you some thoughts. Num- number one, wh- where does giving begin? Or where giving begins? I believe that giving begins with God the Father. And, and if you want to look real close at it, you'll see that not only does He love, in fact, most people say God is love, Right? That's his number one characteristic. I want to tell you today that I think the number one characteristic of our God is actually he's a giving God. 
Let me illustrate that for you. In John 3, 16, you've heard this verse, you've seen this verse, and it said, will you please read this piece with me real quick? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Right at the first, for God loved us so much that he did what? Okay, because he loved us, because he loved us, he gave. Because we love, we want to love our kids, right? We want to give it to them. You know what? Because we love people around us, that's when something changes. Maybe that special person in your life, as Julie came about, I wanted to give her the best, so I bought her a Chevrolet instead of a Ford, right? Ha ha. You know what? And here's the deal. God blesses us so that we can be a blessing to others, that's what's it about. And April shared that as the very first testimony. God did something incredible for us. He is a generous giver. He is always giving beyond us. And we are most like God when we are given. You see, God will give you seed if you're a sower. I'm not a farmer nor the son of a farmer. No, do I have a garden in my backyard. I have weeds in my yard. I'm pretty good at that. But I want to tell you, if you're a sower, God's going to give you seed. But if you're a stingy non-sower, God's not going to bless. I want you to think about those principles. I'm going to give you several principles today, but the fact is God is looking for people that he can trust with what he's been given. And if you go back and look at some of the principles, our parables, let's call them, as Jesus did, some of the parables, he talked about these servants that were given some money, some ten, some five, some two, and the last one, what did he do? He went and he hid his talents, or he hid his money that he was given by his boss, and he hid it so that when the boss came back, he would have it. And what did he do? He, he didn't get any in return. The others invested, and they were said to be doing what God or the boss told them to do. And the last one, what, even what he did have was taken. Why? Because God wants to bless those that are sowers in the community. I want you to remember this, that God is the one that began all of the concepts of tithing, all of the beginning of what giving is. God did it. In fact, if you look back, the word tithe, if you go back to the Hebrew word that it's tied to, it literally means one-tenth or 10%. That's where it comes from. So where does giving come from? It comes from God. How, what, what does giving do? Point number two is this. Listen to this. Giving is not for our good, but for His. How, how do we bless God? Well, we bless God by doing what He calls us to do, Right? We bless God by being obedient to what God has called us to do. Our giving is not for us. Listen, it is for Him. But here's a principle for you, and I think this is a pretty good principle. It says, God gave us the truth of tithing to work selfishness and greed out of our hearts and to work faith into our hearts. Do you, do you have that, that principle there? Thank you. Listen to this. God gave us truth of tithing or the truth of tithing to work selfishness and greed out of our hearts and to work faith into our hearts. You know what happens when we don't hold or hoard all of that money is we begin to be a giver, right? And God works the selfishness out so he can work faith in. And that's what happens. What, what does giving do to us? It changes our hearts. When we give first, when we give that first 10%, it begins to build faith inside of us. Proverbs 3.9 3, says, Honor the Lord with your wealth and from the first of all your produce. If you want to go back to Leviticus and Deuteronomy, Jesus said it or God said it to us over and over again. Give the first, give the first. Just as... I've heard many people say, if you'll give the first, you'll realize the blessings in the past. But sometimes we seem to, to give leftovers, and there seems to be nothing left. When you choose leftovers, we choose the wrong. When we give the first, that's the principle. In fact, if you want to go back to one spot, it talked about don't give God the leftovers. In other words, don't go, if you have 100 lambs, don't you go out there and get those 10 lambs that are all blemished or got broken legs. You know what? Give the best. What does God deserve? He deserves our best. Anybody? God deserves our best. It's that principle of putting God first in everything. And listen, when we put God first in our finances, He will become first in the rest of the areas of our life. Matthew 6, 21, For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Why? Because our hearts often follow where our resources go. And we need to see that in our hearts. Kasim talked about some verses here from Malachi or Malachi, if you want to. Malachi, I believe it's 3, 6 through 8. It says this. In fact, did I, did I do this scripture wrong? No, I didn't. Here he goes. Listen, listen to this. For I, the Lord, do not change. Praise God. 
I, the Lord, do not change. Therefore, O sons of Jacob, uh, are, are not consumed. Listen, for the days of your fathers you have turned aside from my statutes and have not kept them. Return to me, and I will return to you, says the Lord. But you say, how shall you return? Will a man rob God? Yet you are robbing me. But you say, how do we rob God? In tithes and offerings. You can go a little further, and he talks about test me in this. Test me in this giving. And I want you to understand that God does not change. It says it right here. Is God always loving? Yes. Yes. Is God always a forgiving God? Yes. Yes. Does he always punish sin? Yes. Yes. But it says here, he cannot change. Why is it that we always find God to be loving? It's because that's his character. God is truth. Why can God not tell a lie? Because his character is truth. You and I, why can we lie? Why can we do some of those deceptive things? Because our character is not free from problems. In fact, we have a devourer. We have a problem. We have an enemy in our world today. And we either follow the enemy or we follow God. You can't follow both. Point number three. What are the results when you give? The results when we give are are, are real clear. If you follow his principles, there are blessings going to come in your lives. If you follow what he says, there's some things that are going to happen in you. And it doesn't say you give, therefore you're going to get. That's not the heart of this. And I'm going to go there in just a minute. Matthew chapter 5, verses 43 through 45. And this is Jesus speaking. If you want to look back, it's in, in red in your Bible probably. You have heard it said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say... Love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you so that you will be sons of your Father who is in heaven. And he causes his son to rise on the evil and the good. And he sends rain on the generous, or excuse me, on the righteous and the unrighteous. I want you to think about this, that God's principle says if you'll do it his way, great things will happen. But if you do it the other way, you will still see him and understand him, but you're going to miss the best of him. You've heard it said these principles go all the way back to the Old Testament, but they're also seen in the New Testament that Jesus says to us, I I want you to realize that my way is different. The world says keep it all for yourself. The world says step on people so that you can get what you want. Jesus says, I tell you, those people that hate you, and by the way, haters are going to hate. Shake it off. Okay, that was for (laughs) y'all. Is that like that? Okay, shake that off. Move on. Um, That's in the scripture too, by the way. Here's the deal. Do it God's way and you'll see the blessing. Back to the scripture I first read to you, he provides seed to the sower. It doesn't say he provides seed to the hoarder. Met some hoarders this week, by the way. It's really about your heart. You see, if we love God, something's going to be different in our lives. We say we love God all the time, but do we really show our neighbor? Okay, We say we love God, but can people look at our lives or our resources or the way we treat our wives or our husbands? Can we look at the way that we drive down the road and realize that we're, we're loving? Because see, sometimes we say one thing and it comes out something else because we really don't believe it. But Jesus even taught this, not just in the Old Testament, but in the New Testament. In Matthew chapter 23, verse number 23, it says, What sorrow awaits you? Listen, religious law, teachers of the religious law, and you Pharisees, you hypocrites. It says, For you are careful to tithe even the tiniest income from your herb gardens, but you ignore the most important aspects of the law, justice, mercy, and faith. You should tithe, Jesus said that. You should tithe, yes, but don't neglect the more important things. Why? Because what you do on the outside reflects what's on the inside. Think about that. It's about the heart. What's going on? When you plant a seed, expect a harvest. When you plant a seed, expect a harvest. One of the things that Julie and I do, and this is not necessarily for you, is that, yes, we tithe and we give um, 10% or more to the church, but there's also several other ministries that we, we give to. And you know what we're expecting? We're expecting God to bless those ministries, and he has through the years. And those ministries change sometimes. But find out where God's heart is for you, and then begin to pour into it, and watch how God shows up. Just like she told you, I reminded you last week, we were out in the, in the, in the yard putting mulch in the, in the flower beds. And I, I don't do that real well, but I was doing it real well that day, you know, making fun of me as I, you remember that? Making, okay. But, but, but she reminded me, look what God blessed us with. And it's incredible to see what God does. I want you to understand today, when you plant a seed, we need to expect a harvest. Why? Because God wants to provide for you. And by the way, if you want to go back to 2 Corinthians chapter 9, it says not only does he want to provide for you, he wants to provide for somebody through you. Help me. What is a person called that stands in the middle? So here's the resources. Here's the person in need. 
What's the person right here called? The middleman or the middle woman in your case, maybe some of you. Do you know what we are? Sometimes we're the middleman. <laughs> We got God who wants to give to us. And we got somebody over here that has a need. And so God gives to us. And we that's why God gives to us, y'all. Not just for us. Not so that we can just take care of us. It's so that we can take care of others. That scripture, 2 Corinthians chapter 9, is very clear. And he wants to give you seed so that you can bless others with the overflow and the generosity part of it. Here's another principle for you. God does not bless giving. God blesses giving with the right heart. Look there, real quick. God doesn't bless giving. He blesses giving with a right heart. Let, let me illustrate that. I'm going to give and I'm going to give and I'm going to give and I'm going to watch and see what God does because he's going to give back to me. Is that what it's about? No, because you ain't going to get it back. But if you're going to give it and said, God, you use whatever you want to do and I know you're going to take care of my family, you know what God does? God sends us an email on Thursday of this past week, right? And he blessed us with something. And how incredible that is. Why? Because God's looking at our heart. We need to be understanding that God, God's heart for us is incredibly big. And he wants to bless us. God is trying to teach us that we need to have the right attitude. And oftentimes, given, giving adjusts our hearts or adjusts our attitudes. And we need to see and understand that God is in the business of changing our hearts from the inside out. And it begins by knowing Jesus as our Savior. And that's where it all begins. So let me answer the num- the, this question for you. Point number four, the last question today, is how do I start giving? When here's the real simple answer, and it's, it's, it's profound. You ready? Are you ready? Start. <laughs> Acts 20, 35. And everything I showed you, that by working hard in this manner, you must help the weak and remember the words of the Lord Jesus that he said it's more blessed to... More blessed to give than receive. You want to take that challenge? 90 days. That's all it takes. 90 days, I believe God will bless you. And I'm not asking you to give everything you have. I'm asking you to be faithful. And by the way, I I want to ask you this. Who owns everything you own? No, you do. The world says. The world says it's all yours. It's in your bank account or it's in your name. No, it's all his. And he's blessed us. And you know what we're doing when we give to him? We're just returning it to him. We're just saying, God, thank you for blessing us. And by the way, God can do more with your 90% than you can do with keeping your 10%. Show. Show him that you love him. And then let him show you how faithful he is because that's who our God is and that's how he works. If you're not tithing, oh, let me give you this. If you're not tithing, you're not a bad person. If today you're thinking, you know what, I ain't giving and I I feel horrible. I want to tell you this, you're not a bad person. In fact, that's a lie of the enemy. Because God don't make no trash. He has made you a new creature. 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says the old things have passed away and the new things have come. If Jesus Christ lives in your life, you are a new person. Therefore, I want to ask you today to live like a new person and to do what God's called you to do. Be faithful with what God has told you to be faithful with. Don't believe that lie of the enemy who is the devourer. This world is cursed. And by the way, he makes us think evil thoughts so that we can... Here's a thought for you. One of those evil thoughts, I need to go into debt so I can live at a higher level. And that's a lie that we have bought. Right, Julie? And we bought it a lot. That is not... That is not Jesus. That's the enemy telling us we need to do things a different way. And God says, listen, you be honest, you be faithful, you bless me, and I'll help you bless others, and I'll take care of you along the way. God wants to bless us even though we live in a fallen world. Tithing is really returning to God. Listen, that tithe, that belongs to his, and it belongs totally to him. So here's another principle for you. If you step out in faith, principle, you got it? And there's a a wrong word in there. If you step out in faith and trust God to return, what will he do? He'll bless. And by the way, he won't always bless you with money. Sometimes it'll be a bed topper. (laughs) Or sometimes it'll be food on your table when you get home from the hospital. Or or what what is God going to do? He's going to show you that I am faithful and you are mine. Those kids, Ruth's graduating from high school and we get to do all these cool things with her. We went to a sweet honor thing this week and she got to honor one of her favorite teachers, Miss McDaniel. But here's the deal, that's my baby down there and I should be shouting from the mountaintops because that's my baby down there. We did that with Rebecca. Why? Because she's mine. And you know what God from heaven's doing? He's mine. She's mine. And he wants to bless us. 
as we continually show ourselves faithful to Him. And every kind of things, He wants to bless us. And every kind of blessings, He wants to bless us. Not, not just our finances, but how about with more time or the understanding. He's not going to give you more than 24 hours in a day. He's not going to give you more than 60 hours or 60 minutes in an hour. But here's the deal. He's going to help you do more with what you have when you bless Him with what you do have. Did you catch that? So I'm going to give you some thoughts. If you're still with me, say amen. Hey, hold on, okay? I believe there are three kinds of givens in the Bible. Three kinds of givens. Here you go. First of all, you have notes. First of all, you have tithes. Tithes, 10%. Anything you give above that, I believe, is called a gift or giving. And anything above that is called extravagant, extravagant giving. And by the way, I think where God blesses the most, an extravagant giving. When he's not expecting of you, and when you see a need, like April said, when you have that extra that you can give or that Bible on your shelf that you need to give away or those clothes that you need to bless somebody else with or that furniture that you can walk into somebody's house with and say, here, you know what God's going to do? He's going to give you extreme blessings. And one of the things that I love to do, and I wish I could take you with me, this week, this past Thursday, and Amanda talked about it a little bit, we were able to go into some of those people's homes that, were, um, that lost their apartment by fire. And we were able to bless them with furniture. And by the way, we bought none of that as a church family. But there's a hotel in Danville that gave some of it. There's a a little old lady here in town that gave us a bed. that that was was able to give it away. There's some more folks that gave us a couch. And boy, those couches, some of those are so stinking heavy. Um, But but here's the deal. Everything that comes in, you know what we are? We're the middle man. God blesses us so we can bless somebody else. And he wants to do that with your money. And he will. He is faithful. God invites us to give to him. Mark 12, 41 through 44. Keep listening, okay? He says, And he sat down opposite the treasury. This is Jesus and his disciples. And observed how people were putting their money in the treasury. Many rich people were putting in a large sum. And a poor widow, she came and put in two small copper coins, two mites, as the King James calls it, which amounted to one cent. Calling his disciples to him, he said to them, Truly I say to you that this poor widow put more than all the contributors into the treasury, for they put in out of their surplus, and she out of her poverty put in all she owned and all she had to live on. This is a cool thing. A mite, do you know what it was? It was the smallest of small Jewish coins, and it's all she had. You know, you know what God's asking for? Everything. If I begin to use what I have, understanding that it's His, my heart's going to change. You know what? It changes, and it begins right here. It begins right here, maybe at church, or maybe it begins in your home, or maybe it begins at the, at the school, or maybe it begins wherever you, you go to your work or whatever it is. But take that smallest of thing and allow God to change your heart. He said to those disciples, that little lady right there, she's the one that's to be uh, praised. She, she's the one that we need to talk about today. Because listen, you may have millions in the bank and you give 100 to the church. We're going to say thank you, by the way. But I want to tell you today, if you only have 100 in the bank and you give whatever God tells you to give... God's going to bless you. He's not calling you to be a millionaire. He's calling you to be faithful to what you have. He's calling you to live a life of generosity. Here's another principle for you. It says recognize it all comes from God. And then it will become contagious. You all know that word? Contagious. You got anybody in your family and your friends that are sick this week? We got stomach bugs that have been going around. So I was around a friend of mine yesterday. My friend's name is Ron. His whole family has been sick. Okay, had stomach. He told me yesterday morning at that yard sale, he said, I, my stomach's not, not feeling real good today. And you know what I started to do? My stomach started feeling bad. It becomes contagious. And by the way, you give me that today, I'm going to hurt you. But I want to tell you today, if you'll start listening to the testimonies of others, how God has supplied, it's going to become contagious. That's what God wants to do in our lives. He wants to show that he's faithful. And how is that going to happen? By watching others, by putting yourself in a place where God shows you. Listen, he, he planted in us. He gives us seed, and God's going to bring the harvest. God is looking for people that he can bless so they can bless others. He's looking for middle men, middle women who are willing to do what he called. We need to be understanding that staying positive, that being generous is not based on how we feel. It's based on what God says, and he loves us, and he wants us to begin right here. So how how do you give? You just start. 
Start giving right now. And it's not always with your money, just as Lee said. Maybe it's with your time. Maybe you've, been, uh, you've lost your job or, or, or maybe you're on, on a fixed income. Right now, you go, all you got is time. Well, use it to honor God. Giving is a way of life, not just about money. You need help with that? We've got some resources. We've got some counselors here around the church that can help you get on a budget and begin to live faithfully. But here's what we need to do. We need to model generosity. I have one goal, one beginning goal in the way that we use our money. And I want to be a model to those three kids sitting on that front row. Why? Because I want to model what Jesus did. And my Jesus was a giver. Not just in his money. Because he didn't have very much. But he was a generous man. You're a generous person. You're a new person. You've been changed by God. Let him renew your mind. You're not a selfish person. You may act like it. You may think like it. But the fact is God didn't make you selfish. He made you forgiven. He changed your life. And those who belong to God are going to begin to live differently when you begin to understand who you are in God. Why? Because God gives you faith to do bigger things. Here's the question. Are you going to do what God called you to do? It's up to you. But it begins by understanding that he's the giver. And the best thing he ever did for us is given us his son, Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Lord Jesus, we come to you today, and we thank you for being generous, for being the giver, the top, the beginning. And Father, I understand the reason why you bless our lives is because you desire us to be faithful and to bless others. So God, I pray for our church family. I, I pray for our family that are not even here today, that God, you would do incredibly more than we can ask or think. Lord, I, I pray that you would help us to understand that if we've not given before, that it's time to take a challenge and to begin giving. Father, thank you that it's easy to stay positive when we see that you're the one that takes care of the harvest. You're the one that takes care of the harvest. So, Father, thank you for how you are so good. Please teach us, show us. May our eyes be open. May our hearts be even flooded 